Playwright MCP. So why do we really need it in the context of test automation? I prepared for you one use case that I think might be useful and I will show you how to set it up from scratch with Visual Studio Code and use it. So before we begin, let's talk about what Playwright MCP server is. So the Playwright MCP server, essentially, it is a bridge between your LLM of choice, for example, uh, Claude or ChatGPT, and Playwright framework. So the LLM can run Playwright framework and Playwright framework do what? It can interact with the browser and perform different operations in the browser. So this is in the nutshell what kind of functionality Playwright NCP enables you. Now let's think about how we can this functionality, how this functionality can be used. So uh, the use case is this. So let's say you have a bunch of test cases, manual test cases that are written in uh, regular documents, Excel spreadsheets, or maybe test case management tool, and they are written in a human readable language. So you can feed those test cases into LLM and through Playwright MCP, ask Playwright to execute them. And LLM will help Playwright to understand what to do. And then you can ask Playwright to generate the automated script based on this execution. Let's try to do it and see actually how it's gonna work. So going back to Visual Studio Code and um, I set up like a blank, brand new Playwright framework. It doesn't have anything. It doesn't have any instructions, any prompts, anything. It even doesn't have any tests, just a completely blank thing. To install Playwright MCP, go to the extensions and here in the bottom, you will see this MCP servers tab. So expand this and click on this MCP servers link. So this link will give you the list of available MCP servers available for Visual Studio Code. And look, this is a long list of different MCP. So MCP for any uh, event in your life. So here's the Playwright MCP, click install Playwright open Visual Studio Code and click on the install button like this. And uh, that's it. Playwright NCP is installed. And now what is left is to add this little configuration. So copy this uh, JSON file and I will need to create a new folder, which I will call .vs code. And inside of this folder, create a new file settings.json like this and paste this object over here. That's it. Everything is set up. So to confirm that it is set up, open the copilot and here in the chat window, click on this tools icon and scroll a little bit down. You will see this MCP server Playwright is um, enabled and also the list of the tools within Playwright MCP that uh, copilot can use. So the tools like click, close, drag, evaluate, hover and so on. So this is all kind of uh, commands which are called tools. Uh, LLM in our example it will be Cloud Sonnet 4 with Copilot can trigger on the Playwright site. All right so we're done with this and let's automate the test case that um, I provided before. So this test case is for the Conduit application. Uh, this one just simple app uh, login uh, create new article verify that article is created and then delete the article. So this is what this test case is about. Just a simple um, happy path for this app. So I'm copying this test case and going back to Copilot and provide um, just a simple uh, prompt, something like this. Use Playwright MCP server and automate provided test case you need to navigate to the web, to the application in the browser, perform all steps of the test case and create a new, a new spec file in the test folder with this automated test. Okay, and I will provide the test case, control C and going back, control V. And uh, let's see. So right now, Copilot 
should scan uh, all our project and figure out that we're asking to use Playwright MCP for that and it should kick off the MCP and generate this test case. Yeah, look, it's running the browser right now. So right now it should automate the steps for us. And we can see in the copilot that it's saying Playwright MCP server. So we know for sure that it is actively using Playwright MCP. All right. So look, it's doing some clicking operations. Let me go back. Uh, where is it? Yeah, it's right here. So it's trying to figure out that we need to enter username. We need to enter password. It's not super fast, but it's slowly going step by step what should be done. So yeah, it logged in successfully. Now it should figure out that we need to create a new article. Yep, new article is created. Next step is the some random title uh, body and description. Yes, it's figuring out with the, some random text. Description, then body of the article. close this okay sounds good some absolutely random text all right article is created then it should navigate to the home page yep then it should validate that this article is created and then open this article and delete this article all right it opened the article and it should delete this article. Yeah, it clicked delete the article and then it should close the browser. Will you do it? Not sure, going back. Yeah, it's still working. All right, and it seems like it's created the test case that we expected. This is all the test step, but it didn't close the browser though. This is the open browser from this session. All right, that's all right. I can close it. So, and test ready to run automatically. Now, the moment of truth, will it actually work? So let me close this. Uh, I'll keep this code. So how many have, uh, we have 107 lines of code. Let's first of all, try to run it. I hit the run button. It's opening the browser, login, entering, and nope, something didn't work something didn't work let's go back and it failed where it failed on this validation so there was some regular expression verify articles details page open well let me comment this out for now let's assume that we fixed it so going back i delete this article and closing this and let me try to run it one more time let's see how many attempts do we need to actually execute this test case this is guys a real life implementation okay create it and it seems like it didn't work one more time let's look at this time now it is failed at uh, this so the link edit article to be visible but the trick is that this is not a link we have a button edit article so that's why it didn't work so let me remove this um, going back delete the article closing this the third attempt running it one more time let's see will it work now so create the article and it didn't work again what didn't work this time this time it didn't work uh, okay button to be visible okay this is this locator also was not found or what ah no it found several buttons look it's found two elements and because there are two elements two button two delete buttons playwright was not able to figure this out all right i commented this line uh, i'll remove this let's try to run test one more time running this again Okay, and now, and now it did something else. So it moved back to the page, but it did not delete the step. Ah, okay, we have again this validation. Okay, let's remove this, delete, delete. Let's run it one more time. Okay, how about now? And now test passed. So guys, this is a real life example of Playrate MCP navigating to the page and generating the test. So you see the advantages and disadvantages. So it's obviously the Playwright can do things from the MCP perspective. 
if you give the scenario, hey, I want to do this, 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 and that, and if the UI is not complicated like we have in this application, it's definitely capable of doing this. But generating reliable tests out of it, mm, quite questionable. I think if I would manually just use built-in Playwright code gen and just open my test case on one screen, Playwright code gen and second screen, it just manually went through all the links using the code gen to generate my test case, I think I would have more reliable and faster result than asking Playwright MCP with LLM generating for me this test scenario. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I don't really think that even if it is capable to do things like this, it is the best way of doing the things. I think you know what I'm saying, right? So I'm not really sold on the idea that Playwright MCP in the context of test automation can be used somehow. I think there are other approaches that uh, we can complete our tasks a little bit faster. I think Playwright MCP tool can be especially useful for the areas uh, where people are not familiar with test automation or browser automation. Those people who don't write the code or something like this. In this case, they can write some just human language uh, scenario that they need to interact in the browser and Playwright is quite capable executing those steps for them. But for us, for folks who know how to use Playwright, for us it's much faster just to automate this scenario with a Playwright because we know how to use the framework. We know how to use code gen. We know how to read the code and all that stuff. So that's kind of my five cents on Playwright MCP. Extremely useful tool for those who don't know how to code. But if you're familiar with Playwright encoding, I think um, it's hard to use in real world example. So let me know, do you use Playwright MCP in your real project in the context of test automation? I would be really curious to know. I hope this demo out of the box real life example was useful, you know, without any glorifying and without any beautifying of the capabilities. And uh, hit the like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.